How to Undress in Front of Your Husband is a short sexploitation comedy from 1937. It's directed by the same guy who did Marijuana, Dwayne Esper, so you already know this is going to get weird. Typical of these types of movies from the day, it opens with a scrolling and overly dramatic forward. It mentions a bunch of ridiculous modern benefits of science and learning such as cigarettes that aid digestion and life skills classes, but it also brings up a major issue that so far is yet to be addressed. Yep, you guessed it. Women! More specifically, being married to them. And how does this movie suggest that marriage could be spiced up a bit? By teaching the ladies how to shed their evening wear in a seductive manner, of course. So this guy's outside of a domicile with a camera and he is really excited by whatever he's looking at. I mean, really excited. It looks like he's trying to take a picture while simultaneously fighting off a dog that's latched onto his leg. But oh no, we see that the object of his excitement is none other than a young lady. A young lady who's decided to risk the perverts in order to catch some rays. She even takes off her top to avoid those pesky tan lines. Classy. The guy is up on the roof taking pictures of her and the narrator is giving a spiel about peeping toms and whatnot. For this fiend is liable to be anywhere. Hiding in the folds of your shower curtain. The whole thing is supposed to be some kind of framing device, essentially setting up the format for the rest of the film in which we observe two different women undressing for the evening. Kind of like we were looking through the eyes of a pervert for educational purposes. Educational perversion. Hmm. Yeah, that's probably the best way to teach women how to be sexy. Make them feel violated right off the bat. It starts with Elaine Barry Barrymore, who we are told just got home from a party and that it's 6.30 a.m. Jeez, 6.30 a.m.? If she's getting home that late after partying all night, I doubt the first thing she's going to want to do is take her time doing a strip tease for a dude. She's probably drunk and just wants to collapse in a bed surrounded by all the pillows. Apparently not this chick, though. According to our voyeuristic narrator, she doesn't know she's being watched, so what we see is her normal behavior. Cut to another room, which is just below the first one, where we see lady number two. This is Trixie Forganza, who also just got home from a shindig. Right off the bat, we can see the stark contrast between the two ladies. One is young and slim and graceful, while the other is older, a bit clunky, and... Well, of a more robust variety, shall we say? Care to guess which one will be the more astute at disrobing? The narrator goes on to talk about how women put tons of effort into getting all dolled up and looking like a snack, but no effort is made into taking it all off. He points to Miss Barrymore as an example of how to artfully ventilate yourself for the visual pleasure of a man and proceeds to analyze her technique as she undresses while we all watch. I don't know about you, but to me it just looks like she's getting undressed in a completely normal manner. No twerks or cheek clapping, gyrations or undulations. I mean, pretty standard stuff. From all appearances, you'd think she'd spent her life undressing. That truly is artistry. Popping back over to Miss Forganza, we get to see her struggling with her dress. Another stark contrast to Elaine, who seems to know how clothes work. So far, the narrator is pretty mild with his dialogue about Trixie, but wait for it. He really rips into her later on. Here's Elaine again, getting right down to business. Ah, now we're getting right down to business. And by business, we mean stripping to her skivvies, unsnapping her bra, and throwing coy, seductive looks our way. <laughs> she slips on some kind of nightgown in a completely normal and non-sexy manner. Hey, I thought we were supposed to be losing clothes here, not adding them. Ah, yes, there we go. She takes off her underwear, and the narrator is embarrassed to tell us this for some reason. Now... She's about to slip out of her slip. No. No, it's not a slip. It's, uh, it's her, uh, her, uh, well, let's skip it. Back down at Trixie's, she still seems to be confused by her dress, and also really itchy for some reason. Our creepy connoisseur then proceeds to aggressively analyze her method of doffing. These ladies are all here to learn how to undress. They're not interested in how to take down an awning. Isn't that awful? The SS Normandy is in. Is that a corset? Are they usually that itchy to wear? <laughs> so anyway, after we see Trixie scratch herself all over, she frantically slides into a Snuggie with no back opening and vents her frustration by kicking her clothes. We rejoin Elaine, who demonstrates the proper way to take off shoes and stockings. Again, none of this is anything particularly spicy, it looks like exactly what it is, an innocent woman undressing in her room when she thinks she's alone. But nay, she's being spied upon by you perverts right now. You're just as bad as the narrator. She has uh, lovely eyes, don't you think? 
Well, to tell you the truth, I hadn't noticed them myself. Remember, ladies, to always roll your stockings down from the top, never from the bottom up. That's a very good point to remember. I'm not sure how that's even physically possible, but the film says not to do it, so don't even try if you want to save your marriage. Oh look, it's back to Trixie again and she's demonstrating how not to floof your hair. The narrator lays into her some more as she saunters over to remove her stockings too. Well, they'd have to be blind to take Trixie out. How her husband must thrill to such exotic charms. No wonder he has business at the office. This little pig went to market. This will stay at home. You're a big girl now. Oh, look at that. Is that grace or disgrace? You're just wasting your time, Trixie. Oh, shoot. It'll take a broad axe to whittle that down. As it's turned out, you're probably gazing upon the greatest exponent of what not to do in a bedroom. Goodness, he's really harsh with his commentary. I mean, this poor woman is just at home after a long evening trying to get settled down for bed, and this douche is peeping on her and throwing some mad shade. Kind of messed up, but again, educational perversion. She starts to get in bed, and he even has something to say about that. In a few moments, Trixie will fold up like a dump truck and call it a day. Yes, I was right. The dreadnought is about to drop anchor. So anyway, they both get in bed and the movie ends with the peeping Tom getting wet slapped by his wife with the developing photos he took of the two ladies. For some reason, she's more concerned about him coming to dinner than taking pictures of other women undressing. It's supposed to be a comedic film, so, eh, we let it slide. I feel bad for Trixie Forganza. She really gets dragged through the mud. I read that she was actually a real opera star, and this was apparently one of her last starring roles. Too bad she was made fun of the whole time. She was a comedian too, though, and if you look at some of her other stuff that's out there, you can see that she could get pretty goofy. So maybe the film was all in good fun for her. I'm sure she was more well-known to people at the time, too. Elaine was at the time married to actor John Barrymore, and apparently he didn't take too kindly to her appearance in this film, and may have contributed to their divorce in 1940. This would have just been one of the many problems in their relationship, though, as he was a heavy drinker and had a wandering eye for the ladies. The relationship was a big deal, though, at the time, and it seems the director tried to capitalize on this by using her in the film. The only thing I can say about this short film is that it's completely ridiculous. Just everything ridiculous. The dialogue is silly, and the whole thing is strung together by a peeping Tom. It doesn't take itself too seriously, but still dabbles in themes that probably wouldn't fly too well today. Kind of reminds me of 80s college movies a bit, where the guys commit all kinds of sex crimes, and it's just perceived to be all in good fun. You know, like watching girls in the shower or in their sorority, panty raids, that old chestnut. I can imagine a bunch of dudes at the movies having a good time hooting and hollering at the screen. Maybe even trying to bring their girlfriend along in hopes that that actually does give some good bedroom advice. It's a mildly entertaining short film with some goofy dialogue that ultimately doesn't make much sense, but it's still a pretty decent watch if you're into old-timey oddities. Yeah. <laughs>